Many users have been asking us to allow you to format your data collection screen more to your own particular uh, wishes. And this is what we've done in the latest version here. We've already talked about the data formats that allow you to present the actual buttons in different colors and font sizes and so forth. Uh, here we can talk about the actual screen configuration itself. In previous versions of Timer Pro, it was a fixed screen configuration. And in the latest version, we've actually made it uh, variable, so you can set it any way you want here. You can see here my current configuration is basically two columns with five rows. Over here, we have the buttons that represent the rating and the quantity. These are called our rating and quantity keypads. And of course, you can change the font here too, depending on your screen size. You might want to make it smaller or make it larger if you've got a bigger device down here. Also down here, we've got an area where we collect the data. You can change the font size here so that you can make it more appropriate for whatever device you're dealing with here. Uh, we can see the different options in the screen configuration by tapping on the menu button down at the bottom left of your Android device. It will bring up these options. And the one you want to go to is the info option right here. Touch the info. And we've simplified this because uh, many of the uh, previous uh, settings are all consolidated into the screen configuration area here. So we just touch the screen configuration and it will come up here. And here you can see how you can set up the number of columns, the number of rows, the font size of the buttons. This is for the buttons on the rating and quantity area. The font size for the data, that's the area down at the bottom of the screen where your actual observations are recorded. This is the checkbox that tells you whether you want to display the rating and quantity keyboards. We find this particularly useful in warehousing and distribution applications where things are happening very, very quickly. To have that data accessible on the same screen as your data collection is a unique feature of Timer Pro. You can also select to see reference numbers uh, going into each of your entries here. That's if you want to make additional notes uh, on a particular entry. And these uh, options can be used to really speed up your data collection. Uh, so let's look at how you change these. Let's take a simple case. I want to change it to three columns and maybe six rows. So you just touch the button next to the number of columns and it will pop up and ask you for the number of columns. You can have between one and ten columns showing on the screen. So I'm going to select three. And let's say I wanted to change it to six rows. I'm just going to touch the button next to the number of rows. And here you can go between one and thirty rows. So if you get a really big device, you can actually have a lot of data on here. I'm going to put it to six here. And let's say that's all I want to change right now. So now I click on the save for this template. It says it's saved successfully down at the bottom here. And then I hit the back button. And now you can see I've got three columns and six rows in here. And the ones that are not used will just be blank, obviously. Come back out to the info again. And let's select the screen configuration. And now we want to look at the uh, actual display the rating and quantity keyboard. So I'm going to uncheck that. So it's gone now. I save for this template. And then I hit the back. And now you get three columns by six rows, but the quantity and rating keyboards are gone. So again, if you didn't want to have that immediately accessible, you don't have to have them on the screen here. Back out again to the info. I'm going to put them back this time. So we'll check that. And this time we're going to put show reference numbers to show you what happens there. Show reference numbers, save for the template, hit the back. And you'll see it starts putting numbers in here. So if I start my data collection, right, and I hit the time, so you can see the last one here was number six. I hit the time now, and I get a number seven. If I hit the time again, I get a number eight. So this will put reference numbers next to each of the observations. That's if you wanted to take additional notes, perhaps offline for that data. I'll hit the stop. Now we look at the font size for the rating and quantity keypads here. So you can see it looks quite nice here, but maybe you get a very small device and you have to shrink it down a little bit. What you would do is uh, touch the menu key again, go to the info, select the screen configuration, in this case, we're going to change the font size for the buttons. And let's say I made it 10. All right, and save for this template and go back. And you see how small they are. Now, obviously, they're too small for this device. This is a 7 inch tablet. But if you get a 4 inch phone, that might be the size that you want to make the, uh, the fonts there. So I'm going to put that back again. And I'll put it back to, I think we had like 18 font here. 
and the font size for the data is the same idea. You've got a small device, you might want to reduce the size. So I'm going to select, select the font size for the data and I'm going to put it down to 10. Save for this template, go back and you'll see look how small the typing becomes down here. Right. So again, you can adjust these fonts to accommodate your particular needs of the device that you're dealing with here. I'm going to put that back to our default there, which was uh, 16. And uh, now we're going to talk about the different ways you can set up your uh, your timing here. By default, we usually provide the device with auto none set here. And if I save that and go to the template, I'll show you how that works. Now, when there's when there's no automated uh, timing. You'll notice down here auto is this gray right here all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit the start button and it will start timing but you'll notice there is no element in here so you have to select the element so i might say get work order and it's now recording this time against get work order and then what you're going to do is you're going to hit the time when it finishes so hit the time now it stops the timing for that element and starts recording the next element and then you maybe you're doing walk to storage so you touch the walk to storage and when that finishes, you hit the time. And now you're going to maybe get the part. So you click on get part. And it, maybe it's a small part. Click on small. And when you finish, you hit the time. Now obviously you might have a predefined sequence, in which case the elements would pop up. But you still have to hit the time here. So this is how we do it when we have an auto none. So you have to select your element, as you see here. And then hit the time when it finishes. Now we're going to switch and we're going to change it to auto stop on click. So we're going to go to info screen configuration auto stop on click and I say save for this template it says save successfully and then I go back so now if I start it right, you see the clock running here and this makes for faster data entry so if the clock was running here all I have to do is touch the activity so I'm just going to touch get work order and it's recorded the time for that so when the activity ends you just hit it and it'll move down through it. It makes it a lot quicker to gather the data that you're working with. So you can see just touch the keypad when you're ready and it's recording those activities as you do that there. So that's auto stop on click. When you touch the button it stops the activity. And notice also down here when you're doing the auto stop on click the auto has turned red to indicate it's a stop action. So if I change it now and I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to look at the last option we can look at which is the auto start on click. So in other words, when I touch it, it's going to start recording the element now. I save it for the template again, and then I do back. And notice now down here, the auto that was red for the auto stop on click is now green for the auto start on click. So just like a traffic light, in other words. Remember it was grey if it was auto none there. So now we're going to start the activity again. Now it's actually still running here. So what I'm going to do is hit the get work order, and it starts recording that activity. Right. So when the activity begins, you hit the element. So now he starts to walk to storage, he's touch it, and now he's walking to storage. When he gets there, he's going to get a part, he's waiting, and then when he finishes, he's going to get a small part. Now it starts that activity, then it's pack, and then it's update order sheet. And then he's getting the work order. The problem here is you have to know what the guy's doing, so I tend to prefer to have the order stop on click because then you know what you did so you don't have, because you make a mistake you can obviously go back and change it but um, that's a little bit extra work so I prefer the auto stop on click but uh, some people like auto start on click it's completely up to your own uh, choice there now the final thing we stop that there everything that we've done so far has been saved for this template so it's only affecting this particular template there is an option here that says save as defaults so if you have a particular configuration that you want to use as a default for all of your studies, so maybe it's auto none, maybe we don't want the, um, we'll show the display rating, but we don't want the reference numbers here. So if I wanted to make this available to every study that I develop on the PC, I would then select this option right here, save as default. I would tap that. And that means that any, any new studies coming down into the device are going to automatically inherit those particular properties that's the default here and it's also useful if you want to use the defaults if you've got another one that doesn't have your defaults in it you can just say use defaults and it would inherit all of the ones shown here on the screen here so save as default is used when you bring in new templates they will automatically use those defaults that you have here that's the value of having that done right there